Good morning everyone. In computer network today we are going to learn about different types of routing algorithms which are hierarchical routing, multicast routing, broadcast routing. In the previous class we learned about link state routing. There was some disadvantages in the link state routing and for the group uh, grow of the network when it is in the big network the link state routing was not enough to store all the details in the memory so that the hierarchical routing was introduced we will study one by one in detail first one is the hierarchical routing when there is a routing table grow with network size it needs router memory the router memory needs cpu and it, it requires time to scan all the uh, routing tables. It also requires more bandwidth to send and to update the table. So for the larger networks, better is to do the routing hierarchically. So this hierarchy can be in the multiple levels. So that are clusters, regions, zones and groups. What are clusters, what are zones and what are regions and groups you will see in the picture. See here, this is one region. This region can have any type of topology. Here, how many routers have been placed? Yes, 1A, 1B, 1C. Since it is region 1, it is named as 1A, 1B, 1C. So the combination of two or three, three routers in a particular place is called a region. Clear about this? The same way region 2. There are four routers have been placed in the region 2. They are 2A, 2B, 2C, 2D. The same way region 3, region 4, region 5. So how many regions are there in this network? Five different regions. Combination of these five different regions is called as the cluster. Understood? So, this routing has been divided into clusters, regions. In the region, there can be zones and the groups. So, this is called as hierarchical routing. Clear about it? Now, coming to the picture, if you say the full table of 1A, which is nothing but from the table 1 to all the other routers, how, how the connection will be done? How many hops it requires to reach that particular destination have been listed over here. Clear about this? So this is the full table of region 1. Okay. If you look at the first, first line, first entry in the table, 1A to 1A there is no line, there is no hop. That is why it is given in dash. To 1B it needs a line, single line. That is why line 1. Which line? 1B. Okay. The same way 1A to 1C, another one line. Okay. And from 1A to 2A, 2A is here, right? From 1A to 2A, it needs two hops. 1A to 1B and 1B to 2A. Clear about this? That is only 1B and 2. The same way from 1A to 2B, 1A to 2B, it needs three halves, 1A to 1B, 1B to 2A and 2B, 2B to 2A to 2B. That is why it is mentioned here in 3. The same way 2C. Okay, again it needs three halves, 1A to 1B, 1B to 2A, 2A to 2C. That is why three halves. The same way 2D, right? 1A to 1B, 1B to 2A, 2A to 2B, 2B to 2D. That is why it is four halves. Clear about this? So, this full table will have the number of entries. The same way, if you would like to see this 1A to third region, okay, 3A, 1A to 3A, it needs 1A to 1C, 1C to 1C to 3A. Clear about this? So, it needs 3 halves. The same way, 1A to 3B. 1A to 3B, it needs only 2 halves because 1A to 1C, 1C to 3B. Clear about this? The same way, 4A, 1A to 4A. 4A, where is it? Here. 
So from 1A to 4A, it needs 1A to 1B, 1C to 3B, 3B to 4A. So it needs 3 halves. Clear about it? So the same way 4B, 4C. So this full table for 1A is having the number of halves to reach that particular router. So region 1 is having 3 routers. Region 2 is having 4 routers. Region 3 is having only 2 routers that is 3A, 3B. Region 4 is having how many routers? Yes, 3 routers. And region 5 is having how many routers? Yes, correct, 5 routers. Clear about it? So these are the routers have been placed in different regions. To connect all the different regions, we cannot have a single table. The single table if it is scanning, if the CPU is going to scan, it needs more Time. It consumes more time so that we are moving to the hierarchical table. This is the hierarchical table. What this table is going to say? This table is going to say the route to all the other routers and it will say only the entry, hierarchical entry. Okay. For example, from 1A, this we have seen 1A to 1A, there is no connection. From 1A to 1B, only one hop. From 1A to 1C, one hop again. From 1A to 2, say, to reach the second region, it is taking only one line, that is 1B. This is the best line. Since uh, this is using only two halves, it is choosing this line. If it takes this line, that is 1A to 1C, 1C to 1B, then 1B to 2A, it needs three halves. So the shortest path will be chosen. The same way, to 1A, to 3 region to reach region 3 it is using the best line that is 1c the same way to reach the region 4 again it is using the best line that is 1c if you if it, it, it would like to go to region 5 this, it is using the re, best line that is 1c clear about it so this is called as hierarchical routing this table is called as hierarchical table for the router 1a so this table is having only seven entries whereas this full routing table is having 17 entries since it is 17 entries it is a time consuming job to search for a particular network so it is better to have a hierarchical table so, to the gain in space is not free, okay? It is not a free one. It is increased path length for some host. Okay, for some of the things, it will be easy. For example, the best route from 1A to 5C is via router 2, okay? To reach the region from 1 to 5, the best route is region 1, region 2, then it is reaching region 5. With hierarchical routing, all the traffic to R5 is via R3. So, if you are going to use this hierarchical table, this 1A to 5 we are reaching means it, it has to go only through C, 1C. If it takes 1C means what it will do? Probably it will reach the region 3. That is only they are telling that via router 3 only it is better. So, because it is better for most of the destination router, Five. So, this is only best for the most of the routers which are placed here. So, that this path has been chosen. Clear about this hierarchical routing? So, hierarchical routing is used when there is a network tables are grow bigger. It needs a router memory. That memory has to scan for each and every entry. So, it needs more bandwidth to update. So, for larger networks, hierarchical table is better. So, it is having multiple levels. So, these are the multiple levels and these are the entries. So, instead of having these kinds of entries, only this entry can be used to choose a particular route. Clear? Okay. We will move on to the next routing that is broadcast routing. So, broadcast routing is nothing but sending a message to many or all other hosts. That is distributing information. For example, uh, radio, radio uh, live programs. Okay, so it is destinating. It is sending the information to all the other destinations. So what it will do? It will send one packet to each destination. It is a wasteful of bandwidth, and it is required 
uh, having complete list of destinations then only it can reach all the destinations and flooding to do this broadcast routing flooding is used what it will do it will generate too many packets waste bandwidth right so it is also having multi destination routing what it will do it will have a packet which will have a list of destinations and it will have a big map indicating the desired destinations so by, by using either one of these two it will be broadcasting the informations while it is broadcasting if there is a loop inside the network the spanning tree will be used to sync tree we use as a sync tree for initiating the broadcast it includes all the routers but contains no loops so hop, cop, uh, copy packet to all the spanning tree lines will be sent so the router router need to know spanning tree source within that uh, it will link the state not distance vector routing okay so then the next technique in the broadcast routing is reverse path routing approximately without knowing the spanning tree it will be doing this reverse path routing if a packet is arrived on a link used and it will be using the same link to the source it will be checking that from where it, the particular packet has been received high chance is allowed only for the best path that it is received from the source so it will forward to all the expect in, in uh, except incoming line from the other link duplicate links will be discarded so if you uh, see this this is the subnet it has been it is having lot of loops so the loop have, will be removed this is the sync tree for the network uh, for the router i from the router i it will traverse the uh, it will travel it will send the um, data to the all the other routers example in the first hop in the first hop this i sends the packets to f h j n okay f h i j n for all these it will be sending the packet so it is indicated by a circle that is only forwarded packet in the second uh, hop eight packets are generated okay clear about this already five packets have been generated in the next path it is generating a d and g o m okay from the source it is generating again the eight packets again in the third line it is generating only three packets that is five eight packets c e k okay so six packets are generated so according to that if it knows the source of the path only it will be forwarding that particular packet so the third half six packets are generated only three are arrived at the path c e k others are duplicates which are discarded okay so the fourth half four packets are generated in the fourth half first half second half third half fourth half okay in the fourth half four packets are generated e e e that is c e k v l okay and in the uh, in the fifth half two packets are generated in the fifth half two packets are generated that is b and l and in the totally 24 packets are generated at the five halves so if sync tree was followed exactly only 14 packets and four halves are required okay so what is the advantage of this reverse path forwarding it is reasonably efficient and easy to implement routers don't know that is doesn't need to know spanning trees and no overhead destination list in the packets and uh, as in the multi destination addressing here no special mechanism are needed to stop the process as in the flooding okay this is about broadcast routing okay in broadcast routing we see we have seen about multi destination routing spanning tree and then reverse path routing next one is the multicast routing sending messages to all the group of the nodes here we are using the algorithm called multicast routing algorithm why it is necessary to distribute the information broadcasting is ins insufficient sometimes it is not secure so that multicasting will be used so it needs a group management 
it will create a group and it will destroy the group once it has been finished process to join and leave the groups this is only two groups one and two there are two groups everything have been combined together instead of having like this we can have the spanning tree of the leftmost side that is one is having this node is having the connection with both the nodes from the node 2 and also from the node 1 so it can be combined as 1 and 2 okay again which are the nodes have been connected with 1 these are the nodes which are connected with 1 so that is alone connected in 1 okay that is only this is the nodes which are in the group 1 these are the nodes which are in the group 2 according to that it can broadcast the information this is called as multicast routing so today we learned about what are the routings we learned hierarchical routing broadcast routing and multicast routing okay we will see the remaining in the